So one of the first things I did in the house was I couldn't wait to pull up the old lino um, because it was just so rank. So when we were pulling it up, we picked up um, all these beautiful old newspapers and envelopes and magazines and letters. They kind of used what they had around them in, back in that day of installation maybe or just um, a bit of cushioning under the lino. So look at this here, it doesn't even, it's just got the name Lindemeyer and Bindur. Look at these envelopes, like the stamps, you know, just all that sort of thing. They're not like that anymore. And Lindemeyer, I don't know, it could be German, who knows. We've got a little caption here in this part of the newspaper, which I saw before, the Bindur Plateau. So Mr Lindemeyer was going in for the election for the um, dairy industry. So maybe they did have a little bit of money because the, the house was actually on a, over 400 acres of land. So I don't know, maybe they were up there a little bit. Hopefully one day, you know, I can take a shot and show the Lindemeyers what we've actually done with their house, if, if, if it is their house. The old envelopes have piqued Mel's interest. So she's heading two and a half hours northwest to Binjur to meet a couple who know a thing or two about her old Queenslander. Um, driving into Binjur is usually just, uh, you know, if you blink, you miss it, because it is a bit of a ghost town. You're watching this thing. Stanley and Hilda Opperman have lived in Binjur for 76 years and own this marvellous museum piece of a corner store. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you going? Good, thanks. How are you? How are you? Um, I'm Melissa, anyway. I'm Stanley. Hi, Hilda. Stan how are Helga? Is it Helda? Helda. Helda. Nice to meet you both. I was just hoping that you might be able to help me. Um, I've got some photos here. Yeah. So I was quite run down when I saw it, but it was on. It's, uh, that was Norris's, yeah. It, or and well, Linda Myers used but... to own it years yeah. ago. OK, because it shifted and, uh, to Monday. my grandfather and great-grandfather helped build it. Oh, really? And, yeah. and my dad was born in that house. Your father was born in that yeah. house? Yeah. No way! <laughs> <laughs> so how did that come about if he's... Well, our lady Linda Myers used to be a... Midwife. Oh, right. So that was where they went. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Right. But Fred died in the house itself. And, of course, yeah, it makes sense that the Oppermans and the Linden Myers knew each other. Plenty of German immigrants lived around Binjor, arriving first during the 1880s, then in another wave in 1909. They came seeking farming land granted by the Queensland government and to help establish the Apostolic Church in the district. And of course, they brought with them German building expertise. I've noticed on the house, which is something I really love about it, is the, the cross beams with the single skins. Yeah. Is that something that, you know, well, with the German... It helps stay the walls and uh, it's a bit more to nail the boards to. Yeah, because there's not much, is there? No. And then they, if they could afford it later on, they lined them. They would line them. And the roof, the main roof is always steep because that's how it was built in Germany. So the snow didn't ah, stay on it. Right, because there is a, quite a big cavity actually yeah. up in the, in the ceiling. But yeah, we've just been finding a few papers and a little bit of this and that. And, oh, it's so good that you can help me out. <laughs> I'd say Mel struck restoration gold. Not just confirmation that the Lindenmeyers owned the house, but also built it. <laughs> 